afternoon everyone and uh, tonight is our uh, time of meeting again we will be talking about God's word and I want to encourage every listener and everyone that is viewing our video but before anything let's go to the Lord in prayer first our Father in heaven thank you so much Lord for this opportunity that you have given me I pray Lord uh, everyone out there that is watching and listening that this message may be a blessing to each one of us and uh, speak to us Lord in a sp very special way especially in the time of lockdown especially in the time of pandemic I know Lord that uh, there's no rich and there's no poor today everyone is affected I pray Lord that your comforting uh, grace will be upon each one of us in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, uh, we'll be talking about uh, faith without works is dead because uh, the Bible is teaching so. So the Bible is teaching that faith without works is uh, dead. Uh, when I think of God planting a garden, there are certain truths that emerge. First is the preparation needed clearing and plowing up the ground, deciding which plants will flourish in this location, and then purchasing seeds. Once the planting or sowing takes place, there is the ongoing protection of the new pledging plants from bugs, animals, and storms. A barrier or wall is needed to keep out unwanted visitors in addition to applying fertilizer and water as uh, needed. Then comes the perseverance, waiting patiently for the flowering or for the flowers to emerge on the plants which ultimately become a fruit. This is accompanied by pulling out weeds and pruning the plants to foster more uh, growth. Most important is the presence of are required. Uh, you cannot just plant a garden and leave it alone to produce food on its own. When we accept Jesus in our lives, the Holy Spirit enters our hearts. As Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your uh, salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, he was sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. We then have the opportunity to live by the Spirit or by the flesh in Galatians chapter 5, verses 6 and 16 and 17. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. When I think about the Spirit, I think about life, activity, and renewal. When I think about the word flesh, I think about fragile or decay and dying. As Romans chapter, five, uh, chapter 8 verse 5 for they, are, uh, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. James chapter 2, verse 17 says, Even so, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. I want to say it again. Even so, faith, if it hath no works, is dead being alone. So if I believe that my plants have the ability to grow and desire that, I will water them. If we believe that Jesus is Lord, we will live our lives for Him. Just like I can tell my wife I love her all day long, but if I do not show her that I love her, that love is incomplete or useless. We can have faith in God, but there is so much more we can experience and share with Him if we live like we believe Him. 
As James chapter 2 verse 18 goes on to say, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Shew me thy faith without thy works, and I will shew thee my faith by my works. So why the Bible says faith without works is dead? Why? Because faith is not blind. True faith is actionable trust. Faith is having a strong evidence for a belief and putting your confidence in it. James chapter 2 verse 19 tells us that even the demons believe there is one God. There is a difference between believing that there is God and walking with Him. I hesitate to define true faith ever in a person because only the Lord knows the heart. However, what James shares with us is that we can see evidence of beliefs, convictions, and lifestyles from others that can indicate that they are walking by the Holy Spirit. I think about the fruit of the Spirit mentioned in Galatians chapter 5. If someone proclaims Jesus as Lord and lives a life that produces this, uh, the fruit of the Spirit, it is a good indicator that he has true faith. Does this man we have to live perfect lives in order to have true faith? Absolutely not. That is what our faith is in Jesus. Our faith in him enable us to live in ways that are pleasing to him and share his love for the world. According to James, in his letter to the scattered believers in Jerusalem, a man is justified by works and faith. James chapter 2, verse 24. He concluded that faith without works is dead in James chapter 2, verse 26. So faith without works is likened as a body without a spirit. The excellent illustration is consistent with the words of Jesus Christ. As John chapter 6 verse 63 says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and, I, and they are life. Clearly, the determinant here is the spirit of God. Just as a body can be dead or living, a dead faith or without works, and a living faith with works cannot coexist in some in same person. The dead faith is a sign of an unchanged, spiritually dead heart. Faith without works is dead because it does not reveal the, per, the transforming work of the Holy Spirit manifested in the fruit of righteousness in a person's life. As Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 to 10 says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 to 11 and this I pray that your love be abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with, this, uh, with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. What does it mean by faith without works is dead? James is one of those books that can often confuse Christians who read it for the first time because in some ways, it sounds like James is contradicting what Paul says when Paul says, salvation is not by works, but by faith alone. Salvation is not by works, but by faith alone. I don't think James is contradicting Paul at all. I believe James and Paul are exactly on the same page. 
James and Paul seems to contradict each other, but they are coming from different angle with the same foundational views. As Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. I believe that both of these authors agreed that works do not save us. Paul then says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So, if we were made by God and created to do good works through Christ, would our deeds not be a result of our faith? When we place our faith in the Lord each day, we have an opportunity to seek His agenda and to bless Him and others with our decisions. True faith is active faith, not perfect faith. Okay? I want to say it again. True faith is active faith, not perfect faith. Believe in God and, action, uh, uh, and actions work together. As James chapter 2, verse 22 says, Since thou hast faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect, when we press in our faith in God, we take action. When we take action, our faith grows. One strengthens the other. When I water my plant, it grows. When it grows, I enjoy the beauty. When I enjoy the beauty, I water it again, it, it grows more. That's how it works. The Word tells us that it's impossible for us to please God with, without faith. It is impossible. Pleasing God happens when we have faith and apply it with action. Our walk of faith is a lifelong journey. And there are two things that I know about it, uh, that I know about it without a shadow of doubt. The first is that no one else can run our personal race of faith. And the second is that truly walking by faith and not by sight produces present and eternal fruit, all of which pleases God and brings Him uh, glory. Now, can Christians somehow earn salvation? Can we really earn salvation by works? For centuries, Christians have believed that salvation is the gift of God, not earned by the works of man. This belief is mainly grounded on Paul's message on the believers in Ephesians or in Ephesus around AD 62. As Ephesians chapter 2 verses 89, I know that we already read it, but I want to uh, read it again. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. It is very clear in verse 9 of Ephesians chapter 2 that not of works, lest any man should boast. As Christians, we have peace with God since we have been justified and saved by His grace through faith in Jesus Christ. As Romans chapter 5, verse 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible explicitly says that eternal life is, not, uh, is, uh, is the gift of God. It is very explicit in the Bible that eternal life is the gift of God. It is just a gift. It is not earned it is a gift. And that is in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Note that it does not say the reward of God is eternal life. No, but it is the gift of God. Gift reflects the believer's generosity, while reward requires 
the earner's performance. Thus, salvation is given out of God's love in the first place, not earned by human ability, not earned. The redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross is all necessary for the salvation of our soul. No Christians or anyone for that matter can earn their salvation. Remember, mankind is essentially sinful in nature, and not a single person except Jesus can live or will live a perfect life. As Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. James chapter 2, verses 23 to 26 says, This scripture was fulfilled with, uh, which saith Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see how then, how that, by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. You see, these verses can be confusing and if, and if misinterpreted, could have damaging effects on a person. Abraham, Abraham came before the time of Jesus, therefore his faith in the coming Savior saved him, and Christ's righteousness was his own. Righteousness is not salvation. Righteousness is the result of salvation. When a person is set apart by God, he lives his life for the Lord or for God. We believe that James chapter 2 verse 26 promotes works-based salvation. It promotes works-based salvation. This passage would inherently contradict the writings of Paul and teachings of Jesus, which thankfully it does not. We are saved not by works or deeds, but by the grace of God, redeemed by His works on the cross. No way does James argue that works are the key to our salvation or promotes access to God's grace. That's why Romans 3, 22 says, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. It is by God's grace a grace we do not deserve and God's work that we have that we are saved not our own now the question is why must works be present in a vibrant faith very good question why faith works uh, why must works be present in a vibrant faith second timothy 3 16 and 7 uh, 16 and 17 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly, uh, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You see, work is present in a vibrant faith because action and change is impossible to avoid if we are seeking the Lord. When a scripture says that the word of God is living and active, this means that it changes us when we read it. As Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. When we receive the grace and forgiveness of Jesus Christ, 
there is no way for us to avoid living our lives for Him. Change comes naturally because it is the fruit and the result of our true salvation in the grace that we receive in Christ. Sure, there could be some prodigal moments or trials along the way, but works that stem from grace are confirmation that the Holy Spirit is at work in someone's life. So in the next time, I look at my neighbor's garden. May I be reminded to keep working through faith in Christ to accomplish His beautiful plans for my life. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, the subsequent response to salvation is obedience. Those who believe in God choose to obey His commandments and willingly forsake their former sinful ways. As one submits to the Lord, their hearts are changed. Their desires begin to mirror the desires and their deeds reflect his heart for the world. Here James affirms that deeds or actions or works are the byproduct of a living faith. Works do not justify us or make us righteous before God, nor are they the means to salvation. Rather, our deeds are the fruit that grows from one who is obedient in God's commands and transformed by His grace. If we believe that James 2.26 promotes works-based salvation, this passage would inherently contradict the writings of Paul and teachings of Jesus, which thankfully it does not. We are saved not by works or deeds, but by the grace of God, redeemed, redeemed by His works on the cross. By faith, we accept the power of salvation and forgiveness offered for sins. And in doing so, we learn to submit the, to the Lordship and authority of Jesus Christ. We are transformed and born again in the process. That is in John chapter 3, verse 3. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. A new heart also will, give, will I give you, as Ezekiel 36, 26 says. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, the subsequent response to salvation is obedience. We already uh, have said that a while ago. In several passages of the New Testament, deeds are often compared to fruit. A follower of Christ who is obedient uh, or submissive and committed to God's way of doing things will naturally bear good fruit in their lives that will be evident for others to see. It is evident. Jesus told his disciples in John chapter 13, verse 35, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one another. Now the Bible says, if ye have loved one another. Paul also wrote to the Galatians that the fruit of the Spirit is love, Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they are that Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. 
That is in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 34. Remember this, that a heart that is continually being transformed in the likeness of God will reveal itself through actions that align with the word and will of God. As Christ said in Luke chapter 6, verses 43 to 45, a good tree, okay, a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit, for of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his own heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For if the abundance of the heart, for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. In alignment with James' writing, Jesus warned every tree, that is in Matthew 7, 19. This is the warning of the Lord. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is honed down and cast into the fire. Those who are willfully disobedient and continually sinful reveal a faith that is stagnant or even dead. As Paul writes, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators or idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkard, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. That is in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. So many will be surprised in the end to learn that their faith was never real to begin with. And at that moment, as Jesus says in Matthew 7, 23, I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Good works are fruit born and grown from a healthy faith. A life absent good works and good fruit will often indicate a faith that is dead. Okay? My prayer and my desire this afternoon is you would have a faith that works, a faith that is alive, a faith that is kicking, a faith that is bearing fruits, fruits that remain, fruits that continually serve the Lord, fruits that magnify the name of our God. Okay? Shall we pray, Father? Thank you so much, Lord, for this opportunity that you have given me. I pray, Lord, that our message has been become useful and reminding each one of us, Lord, that we as same people need to do good works because this is the proof that we are for real and true children of the Lord. May you bless everyone and until next time. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, so I just enjoy the time and the moment that uh, we're here together. So until next time and next Sunday, I will see you again. Okay, God bless.